Hi everyone, we're in California's Mojave Desert. Now the horsepower wars of the past 10 years have led to this. Four road racers with 500 horsepower and spit drying acceleration. Check your fear at the door because these cars require steady hands and steel nerves. These cars have nothing in common except being the heaviest ordnance currently being sold by their prospective brands. Soon to be eclipsed by the 09 ZR1, the 505 horsepower Z06 is the old man of the group. Its lightweight chassis and powerful 7 liter V8 make it a potent track performer. The ACR Viper is loaded with name brand racer bits. Brakes, shocks, tires, and even a wing transform this street legal monster into a killer track machine. Making its third test appearance, the Nissan GTR. Now wait, you've already heard about the Nissan GTR? Well good, let's move on. Rounding out our Comparo is the top rung on Porsche's performance ladder, the 911 GT2. 530 rear-mounted horses power the rear wheels, and sophisticated traction and stability control keep it glued down. Now this is going to be fun. The Z06 is a champion of several previous comparison tests. While it's impressively light and shockingly powerful, this VET feels more like a grand tour in this group. It's really comfortable in the long haul with plenty of interior amenities to keep the driver happy. But here in this crowd, it's showing its age. Partly due to all its power, it offers little between glued fast and black ice breakaway. Around the track at Button Willow, it didn't inspire the confidence that the other three did. And so, in this contest of track stars, the Corvette comes in fourth place. The 600 horsepower ACR is no car to fool around in. It's the fastest to 60, flattest on the skid pad, and quickest through the lane change test. This is a serious device, and it takes time to figure out how to use it properly and safely. Aside from anti-lock brakes, there are no electronic countermeasures to keep you from disaster. The interior is all business. The only comforts included are air conditioning and a radio that's barely audible over the fierce exhaust note. This uncomplicated racer offers little subtlety. Tight steering, short shifting, and a sensitive throttle can be unnerving to those untrained in the Viper's dark arts. The ACR is a track car that you can drive uncomfortably to the track. But there's serious competition here, and the Viper comes in third. All the familiar 911 delights are here in the GT2. An intimate cockpit with excellent visibility, sensitive steering, and precision German-engineered hardware throughout. The GT2 throws out the back seats and replaces many 911 parts with lighter, more expensive materials. Its turbo power starts coming on at about 3,000 RPM, and the full wallop of 20.3 pounds of boost explodes at 5,000 RPM with next snappy fury. With all this thrust, though, the GT2 wags its tail and loses some steering sensitivity as its weight shifts to the rear wheels. The short gearbox ratios on the GT2 also mean more leg presses on the unyielding clutch and more shifts on the racquetball shifter. At times, taming the GT2 felt like work. It comes in second place. This particular car was the slowest of the three GTRs we've tested, and the only car in the Comparo that took over four seconds to reach 60 miles per hour. It has the lowest reported horsepower, and it's also the heaviest car here. It's not what you'd call pretty, but it does generate a lot of attention. So it took some time to warm up to the GTR. On the other hand, the twin turbo is quicker to deliver horsepower than on the Porsche, and the all-wheel drive knows what to do with all those ponies. The steering feels direct, and the computerized driveline works with you to keep the car pointed in the right direction. There's an awful lot of technology here, and in the end, it works to inspire driver confidence, which results in faster laptops. And so, we have our winner, the GTR.